All right, now that all the smart people have all spoken, now it's my turn. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to do something maybe a little bit, uh, I'll be the anomaly here. So we've talked a lot about community today. We've talked a lot about uh, the communal effect and the collective and the importance of collaboration, which I will touch upon as well. But I think that because maybe I work in Japan a third of my, uh, a third of my week, or a third of the month, uh, I'm in Tokyo, and I'm confronted with this uh, culture that is uh, where, where um, the community or the communal aspect is so powerful, the collective is so powerful that we forget sometimes this, the power of I. So, yeah, I'll leave it to the American to come up on the stage and talk about I, but uh, I'll, I'll, t I'll talk about this a little bit. So, people, ideas, nature, and creativity. You're going to see later when I do this on purpose, uh, pink, I actually put periods after each one of them to, to accentuate uh, each one of these words. But I think one of the reasons why uh, I wanted to be here today with you is I really think that I looked at the roster of speakers and I thought, and now I really know, having been here all day, uh, that there's something happening here in this conference that represents a certain spirit of an era that we're living in. So, how do we look at our lives, you know? Uh, some people may uh, talk about uh, success, and other people will think about success in a completely different way, but they're both eyes. And the streets around the world right now are filled with activism. And uh, I think this is particularly true in the last uh, few months, and millions of people are expressing uh, their hopes for their society, and they're making the voices heard. They're rallying for equal rights and respect, you see this on the streets all over the world. They're marching for science and intelligent debate. It's just incredible that we're marching for intelligence, isn't it? I mean, it's just extraordinary. But seriously, what's next? What's in danger? What is in danger? Do we need to be marching soon on the streets around the world for creativity, to protect creativity? Maybe. So never doubt and this is Mar Margaret Mead, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. And indeed, it's the only thing that ever has, the I that make the we. But I want to bring another letter form, and this is again my influence from Japan, the power of X. The X is an international symbol of collaboration and connection amongst youth and subcultures in particular in Japan. In Wikipedia it says, the art and fashion, in art and fashion, the use of the X indicates a collaboration with two or more artists. The application extends to any other kinds of collaboration outside the art world. And actually it started perhaps in commerce. It originally started in Japan where competing designers would connect with each other and collaborate and make products, such as double branding. And so two competitive companies would actually collaborate together. So Japan is one of the most surprising, and I say surprising, influential creative forces in the world. Now, those of you who work in the design business, architecture, and whatever, fashion, this is not a big surprise to you. But when you think about Japan, and there's such bad news that comes out of Japan, well, it's the third generation of the lost generation, the economy is going to really sink all the banks and everything, but somehow when you go there, that is not the image that you see. That is not what you feel there. And in fact, Japan may have been one of, one of the original countercultures. And what do I mean by that is that it was closed to the world. As an island, it was closed to the world. And it took Admiral Perry to come and end the Edo period when he opened Yokohama. That forced Japan to open to the world. So it was an island and closed to the world for many, many hundreds of years. And in fact, it's interesting because I'm in the business of casual apparel and casual apparel is an invention of the West. There is no concept of clothes in Japan in the way we think of it, because these were the clothes. This is what they wore, kimonos for the family. So if you look at statistics, it might be that we're living in the most creative era in history. Now, numbers doesn't mean always quality, but bear with me. The world's becoming more interconnected as the number of Internet users double from 3 billion to 6 billion in the next 10 years. And a new generation of consumers and different goals and aspirations. The young consumers are very different. 
and what they, what they want, experiences, for example, uh, it's all fueled by technology and social change is forcing many industries to quickly evolve. This is what's happening all throughout America right now. Up and down Fifth Avenue in New York City, this is what you see. The change is dramatic. The change is dramatic. So, those of you who love baseball, you'll recognize this quote from the famous uh, Yogi Berra, the future ain't what it used to be. Well, there's no one, no country, no culture that speaks to this more than Japan. So recently, IBM conducted interviews with 1,500 CEOs and asked them what was the knowledge and skill that was most important for the future CEOs. And the survey said, clearly, over 65% said creativity, that this was going to be the skill to make future CEOs. Now, let's go back to Japan a little bit, but back to the X. So what makes Japan so interesting and so powerful is this X, but also what it connects with the street. And what do I mean by the street? I mean the street, the urban street, the counterculture street, the youth-driven counterculture street that has merged and is interesting, it has merged or destroyed the lines that used to separate what was high culture and low culture. Going back to the 80s in America, of course, Jean-Michel Basquiat, who's now superstar, Sotheby, you know, auctions his painting sell for, you know, millions and millions of dollars. And then in the 90s, with people like Keith Haring, 80s of Keith Haring, but then artists started to emerge like Cause, uh, the person who did the excise on the yellow figure, who's now a major art star. We just sponsored his uh, show at the Years Museum in Shanghai. These are just part of his artwork in the museums in Shanghai. And one of the legendary figures of youth culture is this gentleman, Nigo who helped to blur those edges in commerce between high and low, bringing street and luxury together as a single idea. Good example of his influence of just a month ago, this merge, this X, this collaboration between Supreme, one of the great skateboarding brands of the world, and one of the ones that remains to have great credibility with Louis Vuitton. 
So those two cultures merging together. And of course, if you go to New York, please, please do not miss Ray Calcubo's show, The Comme des Garçons Retrospective at the Metropolitan Museum. It's an extraordinary show that merges her Japanese aesthetic and the influence of punk. So Japan leads in ways that traditional institutions, media, governments, and academia are not aware of. The status quo simply is not clued in. They're not dialed in. They're not culturally connected to youth culture. And this powerful youth around the world connected through technology is extraordinary how it's changing everything from business, everything. So art and technology. I, I'm involved, I'm very fortunate to be involved in the arts. Um, you know, we're also one of the sponsors of the, of the, um, of the Tate, uh, in the new Tate in, in London. And this artist is one of my favorite. In Ellison's Berlin studio, or the lab, as he likes to call it, there are 75 craftsmen, programmers, architects, musicians, and product engineers. That's his team. The great turbine hall at the Tate. One of the most influential world's fairs, uh, es uh, espo, uh, expos, uh, as one that has influenced the great generation of designers right now in Japan, and that was in 1970, the expo in Osaka. The greatest building, the greatest in terms of uh, pavilions ever in, in, in all the world's fairs, I think, and expos was this one, 1970. But it had very, very interesting value system, very interesting goals as an as a expo. Uh, the aim of the Expo 70 was to show, in Osaka was to showcase the po possible uses of modern development to create a foundation for higher quality of life and peace throughout the world rather than increasing the economic and political and military influence of individual countries. I encourage you to go and do some research on this Expo because from a pavilion and architecture and design standpoint, it's extraordinary. This is Taro Okamoto, who was the featured artist, and that was the key piece of art when you entered the expo. So think about this statement about creativity here. We have more people engaged in creating culture. Let's say the ratio of culture producer to culture consumer was once 1 in 10,000. Now it's more like 1 to 100, and I'd say the numbers are reducing even more. In Japan, right now, one of the most charming stars of the Instagram is this couple. So every morning, they go out, and they hit the streets, and they take a picture of themselves. So every morning, you see how they're dressed. Instagram. And I'm sorry I didn't have time to change this to update the numbers for 2017, because they would be even more extraordinary. 700 uh, active users every month, 95 million photographs every day uploaded, 4.2 billion likes every day, and there's a typo there. I think that's 1,360,000 photos posted every minute, and these numbers are even greater. YouTube, 300 hours of new video uploaded every minute, 5 billion video views a day, 3.25 billion hours of videos watched each month, and 30 million visitors every day. And if I could had more time, I, if I could break down these numbers and show you what's happening in China, it's even more extraordinary. Thinking and technology. So one of the problems with all of this creativity and all this problem with this technology is that we talk about this end of reflection in the New York Times. It's a terrific article. With devices distracting us, opportunities for introspection are becoming infrequent. So the thinker today if he was alive, sitting there in his pose, he'd probably be looking at his Instagram account. So the internet typically rewards, of course, speed over all else. And this is, this is kind of a quality at odds of deliberate thought. And what I, you know, when I think in terms of creativity, we need that time for deliberate thought. And our appetite for the velocity of the only increase, is only increasing as data transfers increases. Here's a, a couple of things here, like on Google. We've adopted, well, this is a, com uh, a comment by Nicholas Carr. We've adopted a Google ideal of the mind, which is that if you have a question, that can be answered quickly, close-ended, well-defined questions. Lost in that conception is that there's also an open-ended way of thinking where you're not always trying to answer a question. 
So the data is not really information that leads to insight. So Nicholas continues, you're trying to go where that thought leads you. And as a society, we're saying that that way of thinking with introspection just isn't important anymore. It's actually viewed as being inefficient. By 2012, this is an old quote, obviously, Google engineers had discovered that when results take longer than two-fifths of a second to appear, people search less. And lagging just one quarter of a second behind a rival site can now drive users away. Think about your attention span. Think about the need for introspection. Think about that quality time. It will make us more creative. Now, Japan and nature, this is, you would think, this is a given. I mean, this has never gone away. And in talking about, in, in places for introspection, Japan is one of the most wonderful places. Despite what the fact that when you come to Tokyo and you land at Narita and you walk into, into this city of, you know, the, the general area, the tri, what we would in New York call the tri-state area, has over 40 million people. And this is an onsen that I stayed at just uh, a week ago with a private bath. And, and just the places, whether tea house or what, all of these traditional places that still remain amidst all of this technology in terms of a place, a culture that still treasures introspection. Two books that are kind of like of the architects in the, in the front, in the row here, uh, obviously know these books very well. These are the Bibles for all designers now. In Praise of Shadows, Look in that, it's never completely dark. In the shadow is a complete, a world of detail. And wabi-sabi, what's ugly is beautiful. So, culture and collaborations. In 2014, culture was the most searched word of the year. It's the most popular word. It's become its own media. Culture is a media in itself. So cultural knowledge is critical in my business, in many businesses, is critical for building iconic brands, and yet it is sorely lacking in most managers' uh, arsenals. Rather than such knowledge requires the managers to develop new skills. So as a creative person, when you present concepts to a client, and typically what happens if there's a kind of like a silence in the room, and you, get, you understand that the client doesn't get it, typically there's a cultural disconnect. He doesn't understand the context of the idea doesn't understand where society has moved or where culture has moved. Now, I've been working in culture for a long, long time, and this is just an example. I used to travel around in my previous job at Wyden & Kennedy doing uh, cultural salons for only my staff, and I would never allow a client to come. And this was the first time I opened up one of my salons to a client. So sitting in a dark suit back in the top middle, that's Mark Parker, uh, CEO of Nike, and I surrounded him in Shanghai in an artist studio with 50 of the most interesting people that I could find in China. This is before the Olympics. So rappers, DJs, uh, artists, historians, fashion designers, journalists, uh, uh, trend predictors, all of them, all from Shanghai, all native to China. And then sometimes the trips became very, st very small because we would travel around the world. And here's a funny one. This is uh, on our way from, from Art Basel to New York where we're joined by Mr. Kanye West on the jet, and I have to show you, and those of you who follow sneakers and hip-hop and so forth understand that this became a war uh, by Mr. Mr. West, but at the time, this led to uh, a collaboration of sneaker designs and so forth, and this is what Kanye in his amazingly humble manner said, uh, Nike is the number one sneaker lifestyle brand, right? And I'm the number one most influential cultural pop art brand. So you take these two things and you mesh it it's very exciting, and I am the Nike of culture. So art and commerce. I'm involved in both. This is one of our buildings in, in Osaka. We're known for our color in our product. And we're known for our collaborations in art. So uh, earlier I said I work uh, very closely with MoMA. Uh, we sponsor free nights uh, in, in, on, on Monday nights uh, at MoMA, and we sponsor uh, at the, at the uh, Tate uh, free Friday nights. But, be, but much beyond sponsoring those nights, we work 
on uh, different cultural programs in London and a lot of product programs in New York. And, one of the, and the thing is that we don't work just with these major institutions, we work with a lot of individual artists in the different societies and different cultures that we work in, that we have stores in. So just last year, Cause, who I showed you earlier, uh, we did a launch of his, t of his uh, product line, t-shirt line, and this is the lineup, of course. We didn't have to do any ads. Young people knew all over the world. The lines on opening day lined up in every store around the world. I think we sold um, 500,000 t-shirts in the first day, a million in the first week, in China alone. And then the high and low part. This is us in Paris, we turned the Paris store, the entire store into a kabuki theater. And we did a lot of the product uh, based on traditional kabuki. All for young people. Well, not only for young people. And probably my biggest project I've ever really uh, uh, accomplished so far is a physical place. This is our new uh, global innovation center in Tokyo. And the purpose, the reason why I wanted to show you this is that uh, great architecture, great creative spaces for the, for the staff, for the people, uh, for the workers in Japan is, is, is a new idea. Um, and we needed to prove something to our people. We needed to prove that innovation and creativity was at the forefront of our future. I could not ask them to make beautiful things if I can't give them a beautiful space. It's that simple. I can't ask them to respect innovation and respect our brand if we don't respect them in a physical way. So I opened a library for them. It was a month ago. Now, one of the things, the, the, the Kind of a very interesting thing about Japan, you go to the most incredible bookstores, the most incredible magazine stores. Two in the morning, they're packed. The coffee shops are packed. So you think, wow, they're really connected to the world. No, it just means they buy a lot of magazines. It's still an island. And so one of the things we wanted to tear down those walls, both the silos within the company and the silos that, that seem to come up and prevent us from connecting to the world better. So this is arguably, excuse me, arguably one of the, the best um, art design, uh, architecture, uh, um, culture libraries in Tokyo. So this just opened a month ago. And next to it, that's the analog library, and this is the digital library. So you can book a booth here. Each booth has three screens, and you dial in a subject matter. What's happening in Milan at the, at the, product, at the design salone? What's happening in software? Uh, what's happening at Silicon Valley at a certain particular technology center? So these, then those subjects get dialed in right into your screen, so that this is your digital library. The other thing is that we need to pull people off the screens off the computer, get out of your cubicles, get out of your silos, and work together. So these, we designed everything to be residential style. These also face upon a street. There's, a, there's a, like a long, it's a, about a city block uh, length of, uh, of a street that joins all the offices together. So 2020, an important time. You're gonna see probably one of the most technologically advanced Olympics ever, ever. I mean, it's extraordinary. But what is going to be extraordinary about the technology is that it's very human-based. You know, you look back into pop culture in Japan, robots were never the enemy. For us in the West, robots were those evil guys that came from outer space and attacked Washington, D.C. and crashed into the, you know, the White House and so forth. Robots have always been your friend in Japan. That's what makes a big difference, and the technology there being developed is extraordinary in terms of humanity. So Japan will be the global center of inspiration, at least for 2020. And think about this, a definition by one of my favorite writers, David Brooks. Dogged work is the prerequisite of success, yet there are, many, there are some moments after much steady work and after the technical skills have been mastered when the mind and spirit take flight. And we call these moments of inspiration. So Japan is going to make its mark in many ways. You're going to see a rise in athletes. This young man who I have the pleasure of working with, Kei Nishikori. Inspiration is always more active than mere 
appreciation. There's a thrilling feeling, said David, of elevation, the burst of energy, and the awareness of enlarged possibilities. Well, this is a wrap before today, but this is exactly why we came here today, and we have more than, you know, a, a few doses of inspiration here today. So I put these periods, I apologize to the founder uh, for, for not being typographically correct here, but I put those periods in there just to accentuate people, ideas, nature, and creativity. And I think, I think this, today, you, all of you, made the most eclectic mix of creative thinkers and, make, uh, uh, thinkers and makers assembled anywhere. You know, typically these conferences are made up of an industry, the ad industry, the architecture industry, the fashion industry, the science, whatever. This is totally free of all of that. This, there were no silos. This conference has already become a global center of collaboration and inspiration. And the fact that you have one in Sarasota, in Florida, it's even more inviting to bring the world together. This conference, I think you are the spirit of this era. You represent all the best values of what I means. Ooh. Ah, messed up. Can I? I messed up. Hang on, can I go back? Hang on. I pressed it too fast there. Yes, I can, suddenly, yes, I can. Gee, I'm afraid to go on as turned into, yes, I can. Take a look, what do you see? 133 pounds of confidence, me. Got the feeling I can do anything, yes, I can. Something that sings in my blood is telling me, yes, I can. I was just born today, I can go all the way, yes, I can. I can. I can fight here all night and never.